So what we're going to talk about today is mathematical notation. Um, it's really important when we start to get into upper level mathematics that we all have a really grounded sense of uh, notation. So let's go ahead and start off. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is set theory. A set, all it is, is an unordered collection of objects. We call these objects elements. Usually uh, in mathematics, the objects we're going to talk about are going to be numbers. So we can have a set B that might contain the numbers 1, pi, and 2.5. Notice that these are not ordered in any particular way. Pi is greater than 2.5. That's just fine. I have three elements in my set B. So an arbitrary set is going to be denoted typically by a capital letter. And the elements in the set will be denoted with the uh, lowercase version of the same letter and subscripts, separated by commas and these curly braces uh, at the ends. Sets can be either finite or infinite, countable or uncountable. Um, and countability, we can talk about that more at length later. Countable and uncountable are both considered finite, or pardon me, infinite. There are going to be five sets that we'll talk about at length. Um, in calculus, in particular, we'll be dealing with the real numbers, but here they are. This number here, this set here, is capital N, and on the board, I'll write it like that, that's the natural numbers. The Z, I'll write it like that, are the integers. Q, looks like that, those are the rationals. R, those are the reals. And C, those are the complex numbers. Um, one thing to, to notice here is we'll be dealing with natural numbers clearly. Um, the integers and the rationals we'll be dealing with as well, but the reals are going to be where we're going to spend most of our time. Okay, um, more <clears throat> important set theory concepts. Um, element of. I read this as x is an element of a. x is an element of a. So this little e here, kind of like a, a, a lowercase sigma, is going to be element of. And that just means that the number 1 half is an element of the rational numbers. This is in this set. Subsets, we can say that the natural numbers are a proper subset of the uh, integers. Um, we don't have to worry about proper versus improper, but just as a quick little hint, this is contains, this is contains or the same as, in the same way that we use this symbol. Okay, set builder notation, you've probably seen this as well. Um, a can be defined, a set can be defined as some kind of um, algebraic operation perhaps on a, an element from another set. So for instance, this set is all the numbers that are 2 times x if x is an integer. So another way of writing the e to numbers. Intervals. This is going to be really important in, in calculus. Um, we're going to be talking about open and closed intervals. So an open interval is pretty simple. It's an interval that contains neither endpoint. So from A to B, where we have A has to be less than B for this to make sense, we use these soft parentheses, we want to call them that. Okay. 1 to 6, this would contain all the numbers between 1 and 6, but not 1 and not 6. A closed interval, we use these braces, these uh, brackets, A to B, again, where A has to be less than B for this to make any sense, and 1 to 6 is going to be uh, containing 1 and containing 6, as well as all the points in the middle, and half open and half closed, you can imagine we could have an interval like this, and this would contain the point 6, but not the point one, and it would contain everything in, in the middle. Whether or not this is half open and half or half closed is whether or not you're a glass half full kind of person or a glass half empty kind of person. All right, logical notation. This is going to be important for me. I use this all the time, and I want to make sure that if I throw something in there uh, in some kind of video at some point that uses this notation, that you don't uh, freak out about it. Um, this backwards capital E means literally there exists. Okay. An upside down A means for all. A double arrow is implies or then. And a double arrow with two arrow heads is an equivalency statement. The, uh, the other way we can say it is if and only if. These are probably terms you've heard before, um, but now I'm just introducing some notation that's going to be shorter. Okay. Um, sometimes we'll use a vertical bar, like this is a vertical bar, or S dot T dot, which means such that. Okay, and we're going to see this come up right away in, in videos uh, coming up. Some basic terms that you've heard thrown around all the time. 
um, that you probably have never actually had defined for you. And those are terms like theorem, proof, lemma, corollary, postulate. These are all words that you may or may not have heard actually um, that, that we're going to use and I'm going to throw them around in, in, um, throughout the, the course of the course. Um, so I want to make sure we define them right up front. And the first one is something you're going to hear all the time, you probably heard already, and that is theorem. A theorem, all a theorem is, is a statement that we can prove from a set of givens using logical reasoning. Okay? That's all it is. So from a set of givens, we're able to establish through a set of uh, logical reasoning, steps of logical reasoning, uh, uh, the statement, that statement is called a theorem. A proof, all a proof is, is that set that the that sequence of logical steps to get to the theorem. So a proof is what we do to establish a theorem. A lemma, all a lemma is is a little proof, okay? A little theorem rather. So a lemma is a small proof, usually that we use as a stepping stone to get to a larger theorem. But really, uh, um, functionally, they do the same thing. You must prove a lemma in the same way that you must pr prove a theorem. A corollary is something typically that we use after we have a theorem. So we get a theorem, and a corollary is a byproduct of a theorem that takes very little proof to get from the theorem to the corollary. So it's a little bit like a, uh, uh, like, I, like I said, it's almost like an afterthought. Okay, this also is true. Now the next term we've heard before. Um, you, hopefully you've heard about them in geometry, and that is the terms postulate and the term axiom. The term postulate, all a postulate is, is a statement that we cannot prove. Okay, there are certain statements in mathematics that are unprovable. That is to say that they could be true or false. There's no way of knowing for sure. The parallel postulate is an excellent example of that. You can take it as true, you can take it as false, and it, it doesn't affect geometry. The, um, an axiom is a set of, set of statements that are unprovable and taken as fact. So the definition of a point, the definition of a line, we cannot prove those things. Then we must just take them on faith and use them as building blocks for our mathematics. The final term I want to talk about is the term identity. And identity is simply a statement of equality, a statement of truth. Um, an identity is typically some statement about one thing being the same as another. Okay? So identity is something we, we talk about uh, quite often as well. That's it for our notation and our basic terms. Um, catch you next time.